No. <laughs> Vendell. You should want people to see that face. It's a magnificent face. Come on. Get down. Get down here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello family, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angela and on this channel I create content surrounding beauty, fashion, life and lifestyle. Also I create similar content on my website AngelaMichelle.com. Have you ever been out in mixed company and someone brought up something that left you speechless like oh oh my god I cannot believe they said that or left you feeling like you need to defend whatever they said or defend your stance on whatever they said, well, I definitely have. Now, that is the impetus for this video. If you like to know what I feel are five things that women should not discuss in mixed company, then stay tuned now, let's get started. So now I know I say women and I do mean women and I say that because I'm not in mixed company with gentlemen a lot or I'm not in the company of, of men a lot having conversations around things. So I'm gonna say women. The first thing I feel like women should not be discussing in mixed company is their assets. And by assets, I mean how big their house is, what type of car I have, how much money I'm making, how much money I have in the bank, that sort of thing. First of all, unless you're doing a TED talk or you're talking to a financial advisor, it, it's, uh, it's really tacky, it's not inspirational, it just feels more like you're bragging. And, and it's my opinion that people who talk about these sort of things because that's small talk. That's not something substantial. That's really small talk. And it's people that are insecure in themselves that have these sort of conversations, their wealth and how much money they're making and the things that they have are in line in their mind with their value in, in the world. Rather than seeing things such as compassion and valor and honor and integrity as the things that make them who they are, things that bring they bring to the world, what I can do for someone else. It's all about, oh, I have a home with this many square feet, or I'm making this much money, uh, or I made this much money last year. Again, that's not going to inspire people. And I've been around a lot of wealthy people. As a nurse, I've done work, private duty work with mostly wealthy people, and they don't talk about their money in terms of how much money I have. When they're engaging in conversations about money, it's about how much money can I make? How can I take this amount of money and make more money out of it? How can I diversify my assets? How can I make more money out of my assets? They're not into comparing what I have to what someone else may have. In their minds, that's just, that's small talk. That's people with new money who don't know the value of making that money or making the money I have make more money. They're just into, let me, let me show you what I have and let me show you what I've got. And they're so busy spending the money they're making. They're really not thinking about 10, 15, 20 years down the line. So it is really tacky. And it's just, um, very off putting to sit in mixed company and brag about how much money you're making or what your assets are or how much you have. Now, if you're conversing with your best friend and you, you all are talking about how much money you have and what you have based on what you're looking for, that's totally different. But if you're like, like a dinner party or you're on a girl's trip or you're out to dinner and you start bringing up, well, uh, I have a home that has this many square feet or my last home had this many square feet. Like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and that doesn't make the people hearing it. They're not jealous of it. It's really not something that's entertaining, something that's going to be gratifying as far as a conversation. It's not something that inspires new ideas. So talking about assets and how much money you make in mixed conversation is really not classy at all. So the next thing that I feel ladies should never ever engage in is controversial conversations such as sexual orientation, religion, or politics in mixed company. Let me tell you a story. And I don't even know if they watch my channel, but if they do, I'm, I'm telling the truth. So I was, uh, I went to the Philippines and we were in the car and it was 
like an eight hour car ride from the place we landed in the airport to our next destination. And there were probably six of us in the car. And I don't know whose idea it was to start talking about politics. Now, every, we all knew each other except for the driver well, but we weren't really, like really, really close friends. And we had never engaged in conversations regarding politics or religion, that sort of thing. And someone started talking about politics and it was when um, Barack was running for president. And um, I didn't know what, whether they were Democrat or Republican. We didn't know that about each other because we had never had those sort of conversations. And someone started going in really hard on Barack and I don't, he's not going to win. And I don't even know why he's running and da, 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 and why would anybody vote for him? Now I'm a type of person, I don't have an opinion about a lot of things. And I usually keep my opinions to myself or if I'm in, I'm having conversations with my friends or my husband, they'll, they'll know my views about certain things. Most of the time I just keep my opinion to myself because why, why do I need to tell everybody how I feel about the tree outside? Who cares? Um, it, it's gonna, <laughs> not gonna embed it, it's not gonna make their life any better. So I just keep my opinion to myself. But here we are in this car on this, I think we were only two hours into the car ride. We had like six more hours to go and they just went in on him. And then I remember the last sentence one somebody said was, I don't know who's gonna vote for him anyway. And I said, I am. The entire car went quiet. I hadn't said anything the whole time. I, I just, I, I just could not believe that they brought that, that subject up and just were going in on it really hard because even though we knew each other, we were still sort of in mixed company. And I just felt like it was so inappropriate and it just made the atmosphere in the car where nobody could get out really tense for the next probably hour. When I say nobody said anything, it was crickets for at least an hour until someone else changed the subject and started talking about something else. And I just thought that is something no one should ever, ever do. It's not my business who you're gonna vote for or who you're not gonna vote for. I don't discuss politics and mixed company at all. And I don't think it should be done. Uh, like they talk about at work, you don't talk about politics, you don't talk about religion. I wear my cross that just tells you what my religion is and that's it. And I have nothing against anyone else's religion. You do you, I'm gonna do me. But it's something that that is especially, a, probably for the last 10 years or so, Politics has been a very controversial subject that just, just causes a lot of angst when brought up, especially in mixed company. So I think that is a very tacky and classless thing to do in mixed company is to talk about politics, sexual orientation, and religion. The third thing that a classy lady should not do is engage in gossip. Now, anytime you're in mixed company, you should not be talking about other people anyway. That person could hear about you having conversations about them, it's gonna be very hurtful. They're gonna be upset about it more than likely, even if they say, well, I don't care what people say. At some point, we, we care a little bit about what some particular person said, or you find out a group of people have been sitting around talking about you, it's not going to make you feel warm and fuzzy. And a lot of times the person that's sitting there gossiping about other people is because it stems from a, a root of jealousy. They're insecure. So now they're jealous because they, they're insecure and they get joy from someone else's downfall or someone else feeling bad or things happening to someone else that are not good. It makes them feel better about themselves. And you know, and I'm from the South and there's an old adage that says a dog that'll bring a bone will carry a bone. Meaning if they'll come and they'll engage in gossip in front of you and other people, then they're, they'll have no problem whatsoever talking about you to another different group of people or having to coming into your group, engaging in gossip, talking about you, and then listening to what your response to their gossip is and going back and telling that person that you said so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so without telling them that they were actually the person that brought the bone to the party. So 
It's not a kind thing to do. It's not going to uplift anyone. It's not going to make them feel better. It's only going to make you feel bad or make you look bad if that person finds out about it and confronts you about it. And now you're trying to defend yourself when you didn't even start the conversation. So my recommendation, if you're in mixed company and someone starts talking about someone, um, excuse yourself to go get a drink or go to the bathroom, um, or just go get a snack or do something and just kind of just move away from all that because it's just not a kind or classic classy thing to do. So the fourth thing that a classy woman does not talk about in mixed company, and I say all these in mixed company because if you're sitting with your best friend or someone and you're having conversations or you're talking about things, that is completely different. But if you're in mixed company, something that's very inappropriate to do is to bring up your medical diagnoses. Um, I have this or, oh, I can't do this because I have this. It just makes for a very awkward situation. And in my experience, that person that's doing this is always seeking attention because why would you bring up, I have this disease when it's not going to be beneficial. You're not teaching a class. You're not talking to children about this, or you're not talking to your best friend about what's going on with you so they can help you get through this situation. This this moment in life. So what is the purpose of you bringing up your medical diagnosis? Now, if someone asks you a question or asks you about a particular thing, maybe you can lean over and whisper, well, this kind of is what's going on. If you want to reveal that sort of information, but to just blatantly say, oh, I, I got something going on my bones. I got something, I, this is going, oh, I have arthritis in my ankle. Did you see me limping in? I have arthritis in my ankles. What do you, what do you expect the person to say? They're just, they're just, I don't know what you're supposed to say in those sort of situations. I've been in that situation and I'm just, I, I'm just usually speechless there. I can remember there's one lady in particular when we were in Saudi and every time we were, she was in my husband standing behind the camera laughing every time because we, uh, we had gatherings all the time. We have dinner or lunch at someone's house or a cookout or picnics at someone's uh, different people's houses all the time. Cause there was really nothing else to do. And every time she was at one of those gatherings, inadvertently, she would start talking about her diagnosis. I have this and such and such, and I've had it for this many years, and I can't I eat that, but I don't want to talk about it. I don't even know why you brought it up then, ma'am. <laughs> you all, you don't want to answer questions about it. I don't even know why you brought it up, ma'am. But it is a very inappropriate thing to do. And it just leaves everybody speeches. You don't know what to say about things like that. You don't know whether to say, well, I'm so sorry to hear that. Or, well, I hope you're feeling better. And then that just gonna, that's just going to dig, take you further down the rabbit hole. Well, I'm feeling fine now. But last week, they're just continue on that with that conversation because they are truly seeking attention. So... I'm just saying for classy ladies, it is something you should not be doing. Now, if you're at a dinner party, so I, I have type two diabetes, it's genetic, I, I do. And if I'm at a dinner party and I don't want to be rude and the host is trying to get me to eat these cakes and it is my weakness, I love sweets. She is trying, she is trying, and then I, I may lean over and say, well, I, you know, I'm diabetic, I can't have it. And then they're like, oh, because they're trying to get you to eat their food and you don't want to offend them and they may feel offended. So that's why I may lean over every once in a while if, if I'm pushed and say, well, I can't have it, I, I'm diabetic. And then and they're just like, oh, okay. And I leave it at that. But I'm gonna have some of these, this chicken and, and just move on. I don't, I don't string it out. I just say what I gotta say. That way she knows I'm not being rude and um, I, I don't wanna have her food. So remember, don't talk about medical diagnoses in public. Lastly, classy ladies should never, ever talk about their friend's personal information or personal situations with their mate. Your friend's personal private information or conversations that you all had together should not be pillow talk, you see me moving in the chair, for you and your husband. That is your friend's business. She told you that in confidence, <laughs> she did not want you to tell your, she did not want you to tell your husband. If so, she would call both of you all and said, oh, let me tell you about this. And I learned this lesson the hard way when I was really, really young. And it wasn't pillow talk was weren't at pillow, but I was, I, I, I was really young. I don't remember what I said or what I told my boyfriend at the time about one of my friends or she did this, or I, it was something simple in my mind about her, or something that she said or something that she did, or it wasn't necessarily something she told me, but it was something that she did or something that she said. He never liked her from that point forth. 
never liked her. And I remember it being something that I should have kept to myself. I remember thinking I should have never told him that that was not, first of all, I shouldn't have told him it was none of his business. Now it's going to impact my relationship with her forever. As long as we're friends where she lives in a whole nother state and I lost contact with her since, but it was, and it was, I was in my early twenties. So, you know, I was still young. I had, I, I didn't know, but I was learning, but I, I, I learned that lesson after the first time I didn't, I never did that again. And, and I would never do that. Now I know the value of my girlfriends and, and their business and vice versa. That's something I expect from them. And I know if I tell them something personal, I know that's where it's going to stop. And so classy ladies never, ever <laughs> divulge their friends, personal information to their mates. Well, that's it family. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section, some things that you feel like women should not be discussing in mixed company as well. Or if you do or do not agree with what I feel like should not be discussed in mixed company. Thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time with me. I really, really appreciate it. And I want you to have the most blessed day. Bye-bye.